St. Patrick's Day Event Minigame in Forge of Empires. In this year's minigame there are two groups of players. First, there are those with a surprise box in their inventory. The tips in today's video can also help these lucky players to get more rewards. But they can approach the event quite relaxed, as it should be successfully completed without diamonds, even with one or two small slip-ups. For players without the surprise box, I would like to show how they can bring the event building to maximum level without using diamonds. This is despite the fact that you only get 11,200 pots of gold, but you need 11,520 or more. You can rely on luck or follow today's tips. And maybe I managed to help everyone have a little more fun with this minigame. The minigame shows a city divided by a river. In this city, the hard-working people are all on the right side in the production facilities. And the pleasure-seeking sinners are on the left side with the harbor and the festival. In between, there is a ship that takes all the goods produced on the right to the left side, where they are then sold to the sinners. Everything starts with having only one production at first. Clicking on this building produces heads and then another click takes the heads to the river and starts a new head production. You then click on the harbor building on the other side of the river and a ship picks up the heads produced. Once the ship has returned to the harbor, you can click on the event to sell the hats and get shamrocks in return. These can be used to improve the production building, expand the harbor and enlarge the festival. Through these measures, more and more shamrocks can be accumulated faster and faster. With this, you can then expand even further, collect even faster and so on. In the end, it is required to collect a gigantic amount of shamrocks. This seems completely impossible at the beginning, but then becomes an achievable goal through the expansion of all buildings. Now, nobody wants to sit day and night in front of the PC and click that manually for 21 days. That's why you can hire a manager for each production facility, the ship and the festival. But beware! This manager costs pots of gold and you should be very stingy with them. But you really can't do without a manager. So you hire a manager for the head factory, the harbor and the festival. This automates the whole process and from now on the city produces 24 hours around the clock even if the player should be locked out. Above, you can see three tasks. In total, the city had 38 of these tasks. Almost the only goal of the city is to fulfill these tasks. Everything else is just a means to an end, as the entire city will disappear completely once the goal is reached, and then a new city with slightly different tasks will start. Players without a surprise box will have to complete four cities. This requires a certain efficiency and a not inconsiderable amount of time. Therefore, the first tip of this video is always give completing the task the highest priority. Everything else is unimportant compared to this. Managers can be promoted with gold pots. Then they work faster. The factory produces more, the ship transports more, the festival delivers more shamrocks. But every promotion costs gold pots. And we want to spend as little of these as possible. That's why you should only do those promotions that are required by a task. Please 
always keep in mind that this city will only work for a few days and then start from scratch again. All purchase managers will be gone. We will start this city five times and complete it four times. Our pots of gold, of which we will only get 11,200, will have to last for a very long time. So we come to the second tip of this video. Never promote a manager unnecessarily. As soon as some shamrocks have been produced, we can invest them in the expansion of the production facilities. There are certain levels in this expansion. The expansions within a level have only little effect and at higher expansion levels they often cost more than can be achieved through them. However, completely finished expansion levels have a jumping effect. The harbor and the festival have such efficiency jumps when upgraded to levels 10, 25, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250 and 300. The production buildings also have many such efficiency jumps. But here it is only important to know that the first jump occurs at level 25. Basically, you should never upgrade a production building beyond level 25 unless one of the tasks explicitly or indirectly requires it. More about this later. At this point, I just want to make it clear that upgrading beyond level 25 is less beneficial than building the next better production building and upgrading that then. From this explanation, we should take the following tips. Complete levels as much as possible. Upgrade production buildings to level 25 only. This will really get things moving. If you produce more, you should also transport more. And finally, the festival should also grow to the same extent. Do not simply expand wildly. If there should be an imbalance, it is not a problem. Instead, always orient yourself to the task. Ultimately, it is important to fulfill these tasks. The shamrocks all end up on the compost heap anyway. I have therefore assigned the 38 tasks to the individual buildings. This helps to better estimate what can be used, where and when. On the top right, you can see the task of the head factory. So this should be upgraded to level 25, a little later to level 100, even later, the manager should be promoted to level 3 and finally, the building should be upgraded to level 200. If you progress quickly in the quest line and have enough pots of gold very early on, you can, of course, promote the manager to level 3 right away. It doesn't get cheaper by doing it later. When the corresponding quest comes then, it is immediately fulfilled if the prerequisite is already given. But be careful, it would be unfortunate if these pots of gold are then missing elsewhere. This first run requires a total of 1000 gold pots to complete the task. Tip: Work through the event quest series as quickly as possible in order to already have enough gold pots at the beginning. In most events, you can take it slow on the start. Not in this event. If possible, start the first city on the first day of the event and take about an hour to do it. Running a head factory on a low level is almost useless. You should take a first break when the harbor and the festival are at least at level 100. This takes about an hour. So the next tip is to schedule an hour of playtime at the beginning of each city. It is even advantageous to do this on the first day in the morning. If you start in the evening, you lose a few hours of production time. This alone is not a disaster, but many such handicaps accumulated then lead to failure. 
you should promote anyway needed managers also at the first opportunity already to the target level given by the task. This uses the advantage as early as possible and thus also as long as possible. But you should never do this with the production task. For example, the head factory should be upgraded to level 200 due to appropriate tasks. However, we have learned above that this expansion costs more than it brings. Therefore, never upgrade production buildings beyond level 25 earlier than the tasks require. The reason for this is simple. There are other tasks that require you to upgrade any building by a number of levels. If you upgrade the head factory as the cheapest building to fulfill this task, you fulfill two tasks at once. Tip. Upgrade production buildings only when a quest requires it. As a further orientation you should keep in mind that it makes sense to upgrade the harbor and the festival at least to level 250. Of course, this can only be done step by step, whereby longer breaks in the game will accumulate shamrock stocks, which then allow many new expansion levels all at once. If you take 4 days for each city, you are well on your way. Most players tend to make the mistake of completing cities too early. Tip: 4 to 5 days per city is a good value. Another tip: don't progress too fast. When you see task 36 at the festival, collect 16 quadrillion shamrocks. Then at the beginning this seems to be an almost unattainable big number. Big numbers can be confusing, especially when abbreviated. There is one B which abbreviates a billion. It is 1000 million. One T stands for a trillion and one Q then stands for one quadrillion. Simply do not let this irritate you. The next dimension is always 1000 times the previous dimension. Tip: 1m is 1000k, 1b is 1000m, 1t is 1000b, 1q is 1000t. As soon as the required 8.4q shamrocks are collected, you could complete a city. However, I do not recommend this. Before completing a city, all tasks should be completed if possible. Solving more cities with only partially completed tasks requires even more time in front of the computer and for many players is then hardly to hold out over the duration of a three week event. Don't panic about the huge number of shamrocks to collect. Once all productions are running, we have time. Tip: Complete all tasks before completing a city. There is, however, one exception to this rule. In order to save the so scare pots of gold, you can specifically skip a task. For this purpose, task 25 in the first and in the fourth city is a good choice. This task requires a ship manager to be upgraded to level 4. By skipping this task, you can save 270 gold pots, for example. You will still be able to complete the city, especially if you have upgraded the harbor to level 300. As I said, we have time once the productions are running. With this in mind, you can also save 150 gold pots for the ship manager level 4 on task 35 on the second city and 150 gold pots for the festival manager on task 23 of the third city. In return, you can treat yourself to the head factory manager for 10 gold pots in the second city, even though it is not required in any task. But without a manager, it would be a pain to click. Tip: In each city, one task can be left out in order to save numerous gold pots. With this saving, you can also complete the fourth city although we actually all have too few gold pots for this. If you click on completing a run, you get the chance to buy boxes. 
The first box is free, the second one costs 50 gold pots and then they become more and more expensive. These boxes together cost 1900 gold pots. So by the time you finish the first city you should definitely have a supply of 1900 gold pots plus about 200 gold pots for the start of the second city. For this you must hurry up however rather with the questline. It's not without its challenges. This event demands a lot from the players. Tip: Only complete a city when you have a stock of 2100 gold pots. Each purchased box contains a small price on the level we usually know from daily specials. Even if the offered prices are not really interesting, be sure to buy all six boxes. With every box you buy, the price of the next box doubles. No matter in which order you open them. If you have bought all six boxes for a total of 1900 gold pots, you always get a selection kit for the event building. This selection kit can then either be used as an upgrade kit or to build another level 1 building. The latter is rather irrelevant. The purchase of all six boxes is so important because only then you get the so urgently needed upgrade kit. Afterwards a new kit appears. Now even the first box already costs pots of gold. The complete set then costs a proud number of 3900 gold pots. This is then rather something for players who want to use in this event about 21,000 diamonds to complete a fifth city with additional box sets plus the second box set after each city. Therefore the next tip, do not open any box of the second box set. The second run then has slightly different tasks and for this a total of 1030 gold pots are then required. Everything else remains as before. Once again, plan an hour of time firmly in front of the computer or with your smartphone at the beginning of the city in order to quickly advance the slow startup of production through manual intervention. Now we are already practiced and can work through this routinely. Also, do not complete the second city until we have a stock of at least 2100 pots of gold. After the second city, we buy another box set. The first box set after each run has the first box for free. Therefore, the set costs only 1900 gold pots in total. Again, do not buy the second box set. After that comes the third run, which requires 900 gold pots. The 38 tasks of each run are also in the first pinned comment below the video. The fourth city then has exactly the same task as the first city. So we finish four cities and start a fifth. This way we get seven main prizes. The first, fourth and seventh main prizes are each a selection kit. So if we save an expensive manager promotion in each city, we can make the impossible possible. Completing the fourth city, starting a fifth and buying the fourth set of boxes even though we didn't actually get enough gold pots to do so. By finding pots of gold in incidents, of course, this situation can relax even more. And as I said, for the owners of the surprise box, it looks quite relaxed anyway. Here again, the most important tips at a glance. As shown in the first video, the really good event building justifies the time commitment. That should be incentive enough for all of us. And once you've got the hang of it after the initial confusion, the minigame is fun. Good luck!